Hey guys. Thanks for popping in. And there's been a lot of talk about disc brakes at the moment with the Tour de France and and Anna Filippo riding a disc brake bike and doing so well. And yeah, that's great, he's doing well, but it's because the guy is just fit and he's the best rider, at his performance has peaked at this point in time. Disc brakes in no way are really making that big an advantage. And even if you, you, you basically did say that disc brakes did give you an advantage, the stopping distances from say 50k to 40k an hour to zero, you may be talking about one or two meters maximum. So the advantage it's giving them would be very small. And then you'd have to look at what is the braking percentage of that stage over the whole stage, and then the percentage of distance they're gaining within that small percentage that they're actually getting. Yes, and it, it, it would be very, very small and you know a slight fitness difference would certainly <clears throat> take that back very very quickly now what a lot of people don't understand about disc brakes is that it they're quite a complicated change to the frame and the design of the bike people think that yeah yeah you know you've got hydraulics and you've got a pad and you've just put a disc on the wheel and you know they're getting the bikes the same weight and you know it's all good you know like they're better you know and and they stop quicker because you know the, the marketing says so well the reality is when we look at the way a bike stops the you when you put your your brakes on you actually the weight starts to come off the back wheel and once the wheel starts to lift off the ground then you've reached the bike limit because if you brake any more like just say a disc brake had more power to brake more right all you will do is throw yourself over the handlebars the the rotational force will be transferred into the front wheel and will flip the bike over so the limiting factor of the bike is not how good the brakes are it's it's the weight of the rider and the the bike coming to a stop and you can keep that back wheel in contact with the ground. That's the fastest you can stop the bike, whether it be a rim brake or a disc brake bike. And that's just physics, you can't change that. Now the other thing that people don't understand as well is, is that a disc brake bike is quite different. They've had to change the design of the front wheel, which is, which is really an aerodynamic disadvantage. Because you're running a disc brake, the the uh, spokes now have to be cross-spoked because you're transferring shear force from the hub to the r to the outside of the rim so the tyre can brake. Now, this is the same with the back because you're, you're applying force through the hub because you're pedalling, you have to have cross-spoking. Now, on a disc brake bike, they have to actually put more disc, more, sorry, not more disc, more, more, more spokes in because you have to transfer this load. So if you look at any, any road disc brake bike, they're gonna have 20 spokes. I have not seen any that have had less than 20 spokes. Maybe they can make some special, special ones for the, the tour or for the pros that might have less spokes, but it's becoming very risky because you know, you're putting a hell of a lot of force across those spokes to brake the bike. Whilst with a rim brake bike, there is no shear force through the spokes there's only tensile force. So you can have a radial wheel and you can have a very, very low spoke, lightweight front wheel. Now you might go, yeah, 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 but they can get the bikes down to weight. But what you've got to understand is rotating mass has a much bigger effect than a stationary mass. And especially on the front wheel because the front wheel is a steering wheel and it also has to change direction. And this makes the bike just feel so much more nimble and positive when you ride it. it it's a feel thing as well. And then there's a lot more other complications as well because they only put one disc on one side of the, the wheel, they haven't got a double disc system, the actual loading on the fork is in balance. Now, what I've seen with uh, the, the bikes is that, that they try to rotate these forks. So what they did when they originally came out with discs, they changed from calipers, the quick release calipers to a frill axle to uh, try and alleviate this, to try and transfer some of that twisting force to the other side of the fork. Okay, so now we all have these have these through axles now, which we have to use, which obviously complicate the whole system because now you've got a different standard than you have for a rim brake, 
and especially in international competition, it means they have to have more wheels to fit different bikes, so it gets a bit complex. And then you also have the fact that when you're actually under heavy braking, the fork is loaded because you're actually applying the force at the end of the fork. So any ability of that fork to take up road buzz or imperfections in the rows is lost because you've loaded the forks with the, for the braking force of the bike. So under, under braking, you haven't got as much compliance, especially in the front part of the bike. Now let's move to the rear end of the bike. Now it's very, very strange that it almost seems like every new disc brake bike that's coming onto the market at the moment has these drop seat stays. Now my, my opinion on this is that what the manufacturers are trying to do is they're trying to make the rear triangle much smaller to try and make it stronger and brace because of the, the off-centered force that they're getting from the disc brake. So on the front you've got the twisting force and on the back you've got a twisting force. And I do believe that manufacturers have noticed it or got feedback from the pros maybe that, uh, that these forces are making the bike's handle not neutral. They're affecting the way the bikes perform, the way they're affecting the way the bikes ride. And they're trying to compensate this by designing the bikes differently. And the new Villier bike, the manufacturers have just announced that they have asymmet asymmetric uh, front forks, which means that one's bigger than the other, to try and compensate for this off-center load. So what we're getting in is we're getting the bikes are all looking the same and the reason I believe this is is because they're trying to accommodate these disc brakes because they're creating significant problems with the design of the bike. And what you've got to also remember as well with a disc brake bike, the wider, we have a wider axle at the back, we have 135 mil, so you actually have more of an angle coming from the bottom bracket which would actually increase the ability of the flexing to take place under brakes. Okay guys, well I hope that clarifies a little bit about disc brake bikes because a lot of people think it's just a simple action of you know putting a couple of little mounting screws in the end of your forks or, the, or your triangle at the back and they just pop a little caliper on and then they just have these different wheels you know but it's amazing how people don't notice the differences uh, beyond that, even the cross spoking in the front wheel. I mean, if you've got 20 spokes on the front wheel instead of 16 or 18, I mean, most of the lot riders can run 16, you've got four more spokes, that's going to create more drag. It's what they call the, the energy to rotate the wheel. It's not an aerodynamic factor, it's, it's the amount of watts it takes to actually turn the wheel at that speed. And no one seems to actually talk about this. I don't, I don't know why. It it's, uh, seems to be like flies under the radar all the time, but it actually is a real thing. If you spin a wheel, you can actually feel, it feels like a fan, and that's energy. Okay, guys, I hope that clarifies things up, and uh, keep biking out there, and of course, you know, if you ride in the wet, and you, have, you, you ride your bike all the time, or commuting, disc brakes are a great, a great product. I'm not saying they're a rubbish product. They're just not the ultimately fast application in dry conditions. Cheers. Thanks for watching.